Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some handling characteristics of the Cessna 172 over here in X-Plane 12. The purpose of this video is to kind of run it through its motions as well as show you some of the, kind of the neat little things you can do to really get your maximum bang out of buck for this one. Let's get started. So we have this aircraft all booted up while we're at lovely Simsbury Airport. So we've got the new update for X-Plane here. I'm going to do that a few times, by the way. And uh, what they have here is a nice little G1000. It's got all its latest and greatest updates to make it a little bit nicer. I mean, you want to see something really, really cool? Look at this. I can come over to weather and put it on cloud top mode. Look at this. Look at this. You can actually see the cloud tops. Like you're getting the actual next red. You can turn on taws and everything. Like that. that's that. I don't know. That's just cool. I don't know. I'm nerding out. Sorry, everyone. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at kind of the handling of the Cessna 172. Over in uh, Flight Sim, of course, we took a look at, you know, sort of the general operational side of things, kind of the pre-flight. Today, we're going to be interested in uh, actually making this airplane work for us. And uh, it's going to be kind of fun. It gives us some fun little opportunities. Uh, the handling model over here in X-Plane is a little different than it is. Okay, I'm having the trouble with the brakes again. A little bit different than it is over in Flight Sim. And uh, people say, is one good? Is one bad? da 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 in my um, unprofessional opinion, I think this is a slightly better flight model as far as uh, what I think of when I think of operating this airplane. And again, in the real world, of course, it doesn't transfer because, uh, for example, obviously we're not getting bang banged around in the seat. There's not air pressure holding the controls in a particular spot. And all those usual things that we have to put up with are just not there. But even things as subtle as the way the nose wanders when you kick the rudder pedals is very authentic. And uh, one of the reasons it does that, of course, is because of the way that they actually spring. And I appreciate the fact we have actual hangers here. That's nice. And uh, of course, we're sitting here at 4 Bravo Niner today, Simsbury Airport, and we're going to be mean to this plane. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> I got to catch it. Oh, I got it that time. All right. Excellent. So the first big difference uh, that you've probably known in the real world is the fact that we have a very, very powerful 180 horsepower engine, a lightweight frame, and this lovely thing called torque. Now, the other thing you're going to be competing with, of course, is the fact that we're going to have something called P-factor, but that's a problem when we get in the air, kind of a thing like that. The short version is, if I were to release the brakes, which I've just done, if I get this thing full throttle and not touch anything, you'll notice the aircraft immediately pulls to the left. Uh, that's very authentic. Coupled with the fact that our landing gear, our front spring wheel in the front that you can see I'm basically getting ready to push, our nose wheel does not have a direct connection. It's basically sprung. So when I push it, you're actually kind of bouncing off the spring, not mechanically moving it precisely like you would with a car wheel. When you put those two things together, it makes for a much, much more ex uh, exciting, I would say, takeoff than uh, probably you would expect. And that's one of those things that you get in the real world as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply full power here. I'm gonna go ahead and push just a little bit of right foot. And all we're doing is tightening the spring, essentially. You're not really driving that front wheel. But the nice thing about the spring is it takes some of the bounce out of your initial takeoff here. I'm going to give it just a little bit of uh, left aileron there. About 45 knots. I'm not using any flaps today to take off. It'll be fine. We're pretty light. There we go. And we're going to go jump up into the air. Just like that. And you can see I need a little bit less rudder. And we'll just kind of balance out. So now this is well one of the big differences too with this plane. And again, uh, Cherokees, especially like the late um, 1960s, early 70s ones, had a real fun time where if I let go of the rudder, you'll notice this aircraft shoots to the left. And that is completely accurate to the real plane. Now the Cessna 172, not so much, but in the Cherokees especially. And that's because if you take a look at our aircraft right now, if I can get us in a view that you can actually see, you will probably notice because we're at a high angle, one of those propeller blades is descending and the other one is rising, which means it's hitting the incoming air unevenly, which twists us along with that lovely little uh, torque factor that you saw during our little takeoff there. When you put those things together, you have quite a dynamic experience. And one of the things I love about this is every little bump, every little bit of shift of force, you immediately feel directly. Now, the reason I titled this video basically uh, handling and kind of abusing is to give you an idea of sort of like the flight model and some of the kind of fun things that you can do with this airplane and sort of its little quirks. But uh, in order to do that, one of the things I'm going to have to do is I need to get myself a little bit further into a zone where I can get myself a little bit of altitude in case I stall and really, really put this plane to the ground by an accident. This is a little better. I'm not loving those clouds, but I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it work. I'm also going to turn my volume down so I can hear myself think here. Just like the real plane, who knew? So what we have here is we're going to go through a couple different motions, and which makes this aircraft kind of fun, especially when you're first kind of learning it. And the first thing they teach you usually when you're learning to handle these planes, other than trying to keep the thing going in a straight line, which again, the trim is just so light and so easy in this plane, is flying the plane really slow, which is really a preparation getting you ready to land the plane. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to meanly, very cruelly pull my throttle back here. Go ahead and let the plane slow down a little bit. You know, this is, I love the quirks of this model, and you'll see what I mean here. All right, we're under 85 knots. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing those flaps down. I expect the nose to fly up. And what we're going to do is we're going to catch it before it gets away from us, because it will get away from us. Now, we're going to slow this plane down a lot. And when I mean a lot, if our cruise speed is 120, we're going to get this thing down until it does not like us very much. There's 54, starting to get slow, but this isn't slow yet. There we go. What I'm listening for is a very angry sound to come out of the stall warning. And I love the fact that this aircraft, you can fly on a knife edge safely and feel confident about it. And you can see every little shake of my hand causes this aircraft to wiggle a little bit. So there's 45 knots. So uh, we're going pretty slow. <laughs> and uh, this is awesome. And one of the things you don't see here is look at how forward my right foot is. It takes a tremendous amount of rudder effort in order to keep this aircraft coordinated. Something that's very, very, very important when you're going slow. But every little bump of drag, every little bump of wind, you can feel it very clearly through the flight model. But I still feel completely in control. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and tip the plane to the right just a little bit. And one of the things you find uh, when you kind of fly the plane like this is the entire aircraft turns really rapidly for a very, very little bank angle. You also feel the aircraft just wants to come out from underneath you. Every once in a while, you're going to hear just a little tap of that stall warning, just giving you a heads up saying, are you sure this is really what you're trying to do today? Because it feels like you're being a little rough with me. But again, look at how easy this aircraft is to control. See, it's trying to run away from you. I'm going to go ahead and bring myself back this way just a little bit. Again, 45, 46 knots is incredibly slow. Holding 3,000 feet perfectly, the G1000 makes this so much easier. There we go. And again, I am stomping that right foot. Like, my right foot is going to be worn out, and that is completely authentic to the real plane. There we go. Keep it slow, keep it slow. The lovely Bark Hamster Reservoir underneath us. So we're going to take it even slower. Again, to knock a couple RPM off, he's got a very responsive engine, just a little bit slower, a little bit slower. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting slow. If you hear that whining noise, that is the stall warning notifying you. You've got about two to five knots before this aircraft stalls. Now this aircraft, you can hold on a knife edge. You notice none of my wings are starting to drop. Everything is perfectly coordinated, right? there. Delightful. Look at this. That's incredible. This aircraft is so grumpy and I'm literally at 41 knots and this thing keeps flying. Love it. Now, if you try to do something stupid like turning an airplane at this speed, and again, this is already a beautiful exercise to teach if you really can control a plane. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there's the buffet. It wants to come out from us. Oh my goodness. I'm going to look out the window so you don't have to hear that. I cannot believe how controllable this plane is. I can also not believe how hard I have to pull. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. There it goes. I caught it. All right. So you don't have to hear that sound anymore. Let's go through with the stall. So I'm going to pull my throttle to zero. And we're going to hold the stick back. And there's the stall. Delightful. Now you'll notice how easy it is to recover from that. You simply reduce the pressure on the controls. You also notice that our right wing tried to take a dive when we did that. Uh, it's very, very, very authentic depending on how hard you've been with it. Go ahead and give it full power to try to recover. It looks like we've got a little bit of ice in the carburetor. Does not surprise me. There we go. Just give it a few moments. We'll go ahead and give it a little bit of heat to kind of give it a little bit of a push there. Oh no, we don't have a carburetor. My apologies. Oh no, yeah, I'm right, I'm right. We don't have a carburetor. We're fuel injected. Sorry about that. There we go. Let's go ahead and build it up a little bit. Build it up a little bit. Give it some altitude. All right, let's do it again. But um, this time what I'm going to do is ignore the rudder pedals. Now watch what happens this time. All right, I've let my foot off the rudder pedals. Gosh, this feels so wrong. Now watch what happens. Whoa! You'll notice the aircraft immediately drops that wing, just like it did the last time. Exactly what it should do. All right, let's go swing us back over this way. Let's see if we can get a smoother stall out of it. You can hear how angry it is. We're still doing 40 knots, so it's pretty mad at us still. All right, watch this. Okay, we're going to go pull that throttle back, and we're just going to enjoy it. I'm going to give it a little bit of left foot this time. Left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot. Oh, there it goes. That was much better. 
And you can see that our recovery is much, much, much quicker there. And it's much less likely. Now, one of the fun things, if you really want to be rough with this plane, watch this, watch this. I'm going to pull this throttle all the way to zero again. And again, these are great things to practice. They really teach you how to control a plane. All right, what does it want to lose? What wing is it going to be? What wing is it going to be? See the buffet? Watch this. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. There we go. So I call this the falling leaf maneuver. So if you look at our airplane, we are completely stalled right now. But the aircraft is completely in control because I'm basically using my feet to keep the wings straight. If you were to go ahead and pull too hard with anything like that. Whoa, there we go. Now we're spinning. Woohoo. Yeah. All right. Right foot. Nice. Delightful. And again, that is such a fun thing to try. All right, let's go ahead and bring in some power. We're gonna go ahead and cancel out the flaps. So as you can see, uh, that little slow flight maneuver absolutely teaches you that razor thin margins. And it's just so easy to do uh, like when you're doing that because you can kind of feel it in every little bit of nudge. There's nothing artificial about it. It feels uh, very, very natural like it does in the real world. Keep in mind in the real world, you have wind that bumps you around a little bit and it tends to cause that stall to happen when you didn't want. Now, one of the fun things you can do if you're feeling really rude to this airplane is we can put this plane into what they call a departure stall. And what you're going to do is you're going to give it full throttle. And again, you gentle on your feet. Don't be playing with the ailerons here. Oh, did you see it? Did you see how it snapped? There was no control there. And I'll do that one more time. Let's go ahead and pull that nose up again. 25 is plenty. We're at full throttle right now. Give it a little bit of right foot little bit of right foot uh oh, oh! <laughs> see how it just burnt like that because uh, one wing is like i quit and the other wing is like i can still fly and you get that kind of motion let me show you a fun trick so let's go ahead and uh, put ourselves right back on that edge again get ourselves up to a full power here hold about 20 degrees again now uh, your feet are your best friends here there it goes does not like what i'm doing to it let's see how razor edge watch this Watch this. See how the plane does not like that? See a little rumble where it kind of snaps a little bit? We got it. Oh my goodness. This is requiring every bit of concentration to hold this. And again, if you want to learn to fly planes better, this will get you there. My goodness. We are so in a bad spot here. Now the joke here is if I pull back and kick my left foot, watch what happens. Gotta go. yee There it is. All right, right foot, nose forward. 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 Uh-oh. Is this the end? All right, I think we got a rocket. I think we got a rocket. Oh, no! <laughs> I pinky promise you, the real plane is much easier to get out of a spin than this thing is. That is something I find that most flight simulators just overdo just a little bit. But it's okay. Like I said, in the real plane, generally this will go like that, and it'll snap you right out of the spin. But it's kind of fun to actually try. You know, like you can see here, nothing was going to recover. I did everything exactly the way the book tells you to do. It was hopeless. And we can try, probably shift the center of gravity forward a little bit to try to make it a little bit safer. But it's kind of neat. So when it comes to maneuvers too, um, we've done a lot of slow flights, we've done a lot of stalls, we've done a lot of kind of the edge recovery and stuff like that. Other maneuvers that I really, really like to do in a 172 is kind of a warm up, of course, consists of things like very, very different tight, tight earns. Uh, for example, steep turns are kind of fun to do. And uh, the other thing you can do, which is really fun, is you can combine a steep turn with a turn and you get something kind of chandelle, which is a ton of fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push my throttle all the way forward. Now we're going to build up a couple of those speeds. We're going to keep our airspeed under about 105, 106, because uh, we're going to make sure we don't over maneuver our airplane. And you can see I've gathered quite a bit of altitude this time. So I have more time to enjoy the ride down to the ground before I crash when I spin it this time. So what we're going to do is that we're going to start by taking a nice gentle bank. We're going to start lifting the nose up. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a very aggressive turn here. Basically sucking the energy out of the plane. Suck the energy out of the plane. Get ready on your feet. Get ready on your feet. There's the stall warning. And we're going to come out of it just like that. So now we're just in the edge of a stall. We've gained a bunch of feet. And we've also cornered ahead and changed our direction. So we're now facing the other way that we were traveling from other position. Now, one of the things that makes this aircraft really easy to maneuver. Whoa, that doesn't is that you got that lovely little green flight path vector there. And if you keep that right on the horizon like that, that means uh, you're not gaining or losing any altitude. 
So the reason that's kind of fun, let me move my seat forward a little bit here, is the fact that, let's say I was practicing stuff like steep turns. And again, I'm up pretty high as far as altitude goes. So it's gonna be a little hard to do. But if I were to, for example, go ahead and tip my airplane over here like this, all I have to do is keep the green circle right on that line, and that's as much effort as it's going to take to go ahead and execute the particular maneuver. The only thing I have to do from here, of course, is uh, do all the work as far as keeping my feet steady, and making sure that's nice and centered, all those things, just like that. Just look at this, this is leisurely. Keep in mind in the real world, you can't get away with this quite like I am right here, only on account of the fact that the control forces involved to be able to pulling this maneuver are very uncomfortable. There are some really fun tricks people use, such as uh, using trim to kind of hold it steady. I find that a little cheeky, but again, you do what works for you. All right, there you go. Come out of the turn and you can see everything is perfect. We barely gained or lost basically six feet there, which is fantastic. And again, it gives you an idea of all the other maneuvers that we can do. Another really fun thing to do with a 172 in a sim, but not in the real world. So I'm going to pull the throttle all the way to idle. Now you're sitting there going, what are we demonstrating here? My tail is on fire. Now you'll see here that we're traveling at about 125, 126 knots. It's actually a little fast for this maneuver. And uh, we're pushing down about 10 degrees here. And my engine is completely idle. And uh, for those of you who uh, worry about the temperature of things, uh, do not look at my cylinder head temperature right now. It'll be 100 degrees before we get down to the ground. So the concept here, of course, is that my aircraft is on fire at the tail and I'm trying to get as much air on it as possible to basically cool it off. So this is an emergency. And I notice my aircraft is still on fire. So we increase the angle of attack a little bit, or decrease angle of attack technically. We increase our pitch a little bit. Now the scary thing here is, as the speed picks up, your controls get really hard to move in the real world. So let me go ahead and get this nose down even more. And again, this is an emergency only situation. You would never do what I'm doing right now, but it's important that you understand it and think about it. There's 160 knots. I'm gonna let the nose come up just a little bit. And there we go. So 160 knots gets us about 4,800 feet per minute. This aircraft is dropping out of the sky. Hopefully that lovely fire on that tail breaks. Now here's the thing when I was in flight training that I always messed up and you have to be real careful. How do you get out of what we just did? The answer is gently. Cause when if I go like this, that's a half a G extra. It's about a G and a quarter right there. You definitely feel yourself get flattened. Any sudden moves right now will cause all sorts of catastrophic mechanical problems. So what I'm gonna do is just let the nose come back to the line here and we'll enjoy the nice reduction in speed. And here's the weird part. As you reduce speed, you have to increase throttle, but not too fast. Otherwise you're gonna overspeed the propeller and that's gonna cause all sorts of new problems for you. Nice. So as you can see, the Cessna 172 has got a lot of life to it. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. And it's still very, very hands-on of an airplane. And I like that because it gives you all that extra little stuff that you have to get right. But at the same time, it feels okay. Like, I don't have to get myself in trouble other than literally crashing into the lake over there because I couldn't get out of the spin. And again, there's ways, there's really cheeky ways to get out of the spin. Flaps. Um, but like, I'm not going to do that for the purposes of demonstration. So hopefully this encourages you to try the X-Plane 12 flight model for this airplane out. I think it's great. Uh, next time what we'll do is uh, we'll do a little bit more work with it with takeoff and landing, kind of do some pattern work to kind of see how that affects what we actually do when we need to get back on the ground. Enjoy.